I'm gonna be showing you some great ideas to make Dollar Tree sensory bins. Dollar Tree is a great place to find some things very inexpensive so you can make some great sensory bins with your kids. And I have some new ideas for you. Hey, hey, you guys, it's Christina from The Purple Alphabet. Excited about sensory bins, excited about Dollar Tree, and excited about putting them together because it's just a perfect match, right? I've done a few other videos in the past where I've talked about using Dollar Tree for activities. I'm gonna pop those down below in the description box. You can go check them out too. Lots of ideas happening in those so you can get inspired on making your own dollar activities. In today's video, I'm focusing just on sensory bins, and so I'm gonna show you a couple of ideas that you can try and maybe be inspired to create your own. Let's get started. I do owe you a giveaway winner too for the Lakeshore Learning $50 gift card. If you see your name here on the screen, congratulations. You have won and you have 72 hours to respond to claim your prize. If you didn't win this one, don't worry you guys. I am always having giveaways, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on them. Can we just talk about containers for a second at Dollar Tree? I have been a big fan of these SureFresh containers from Dollar Tree. They're the square ones. I've also seen some rectangular ones and I've used those in activities. Guys, most recently I have found these and these are rectangular but bigger they're like shoebox size but like maybe a couple inches bigger and they're a little bit deeper depending on what you can find on your at your store definitely stock up because you're going to want them I'm going to be using a combination of these today I was so excited to walk into Dollar Tree and to finally find the spider web the past couple times I've been in there I haven't seen them but I was very happy to see these plus they actually have the spiders inside the package I was actually looking for a package of just plain spiders but couldn't find them. I found spider rings, but not just spiders. And this also comes in different colors. We have the white, the orange, the green, the black. So you can mix it up however you want or just use your traditional white spider web. I chose the white spider web because I just thought it just would be easiest for this activity. And I do like the spiders come with it. There's not a lot of spiders in here, so you can definitely buy more. And they aren't that expensive to buy even at other stores. So we have some spider web for this one. Also for this activity, I would recommend getting some of the mini buckets. On the mini buckets, they they come in different styles. There's skulls, there's cauldrons, and then there's the pumpkins. I got the pumpkins. I feel like these came more to a pack in previous years, but I don't remember. And this one has four to a package. So I got some of those for this. If you don't want to do the Halloween theme, you don't have to, you guys. I'm going to give you some ideas and you can adapt it for any time of year, you know, Easter, Valentine's Day, whatever holiday, or you can just make it any time normal. So instead of using these kind of Halloween-ish containers, you can use something simple like this. This is also from the Dollar Tree. These come two to a package. They're just white, plain white containers, and this was going to work just as well. So when you look at these activities today, just keep that in mind because you can really alter these and vary them however you want. I do like to keep my sensory bins very, very simple because I don't think you need a lot. And then also you can redo them and repurpose all of the materials you use. So even though this is spider web, you don't have to use it just for Halloween. This is just a good base to start off with, and all sensory bins are going to have a base. So I'm gonna just, oh, they are rings. You guys, I didn't know they were rings. Well, darn it, I thought they were just plain spiders, but they're rings, that's okay, we can still use them. I was hoping they'd be plain spiders. I actually have plain spiders. As I was saying, bases. So you need a base for your sensory bin, and this is spider web, but it doesn't have to be just for Halloween. You can keep this throughout the year and use it as a base if you wish. Now our bases are always something tactile, something that has to do with touch. So we're looking for things that have different textures. Sensory bins are meant to explore for kids who have sensory processing disorders, meaning they don't like to touch things. Certain textures kind of turn them off. And so when you use a sensory bin, the idea is to acclimate them to those certain textures. So you would start off with things that are non-threatening to their touch that they don't mind. And that's going to be different per child, by the way. Something that's softer like this might not be as threatening as something that is sticky or something that is wet, for example. Sensory bins are also great for those kids who are sensory seekers who constantly need touch constantly need sensorial input and so they're really great on helping them to get that input pretty quickly. I'm actually going to cut mine but I'm going to use just a little bit of it. I probably should have got a different color from the camera huh? All right, can you guys even see that? It's hard to see all the white, but I've got the spider web kind of over here. And also leave some holes in here too, okay? So I have to make some holes for those little hands to go in. Now we have a varying levels of difficulty here with the spiders. I really do wish these were plain spiders, not rings, but we'll have to make it work. For the easiest level, put them on the bottom 
underneath the spider web because once these get caught up in that spider web, it can be kind of tricky to get out. So if you have a toddler or a preschooler who is just learning how to do this, then this would be the best way to tackle this. So I left a couple holes in here so they can put their hands to reach in to get the spider. Even that one got caught a little bit, but not too bad. There we go. To make this a more fine motor activity, you can add in a tool. So I have some tweezers here. These actually did not come from the Dollar Tree, but Dollar Tree does have tools in the teacher section and you make it a tweezer activity by pulling them out. And where those buckets come into play, this can be your container to collect all of your spiders. Once again, you don't have to use the Halloween theme. You could use just a plain container if you want, something you have at home just to pick them up. Just thought it was fun to include the little pumpkins as far as a little theme goes. Also tools that you can use for this are things like these little tweezers, like the like a bamboo tweezers. They're just a little bit more difficult as they are made for bigger hands. These are on Amazon. I'll try to link them down below. If I don't, you'll have to let me know. Now, if you wanna make this more difficult, maybe this is way too easy for your child, you can definitely put them in the spider web, but I am warning you that putting them in the spider web is a lot more difficult to get them out. So you can put them in the spider web and this requires a lot. I mean, you probably wouldn't even be able to use the tool for this one, but this requires a lot of pulling away that web to get it out to rescue that spider out of there and to put it in. So a little bit more difficult, probably might frustrate some toddlers, but it actually might fascinate some toddlers that really like this kind of stuff. And you do have to pull that webbing out. Just some ideas with that. The inspiration for this next one came from these little clothespins. They're pumpkin clothespins and they're the cutest thing I've ever seen. Plus they are actually clips. So look at this little clothespin on the back and you clip them. They're just adorable. So I got a couple packages of these thinking you can do like 10, you know, do a counting activity, 10 pumpkins, but I think several of these would work really well. They also came in bats I saw. I think I saw some hats. I think I saw just all kinds of different ones. So keep your eyes peeled for those. There's also some Thanksgiving themed ones. And then I found mesh tubing in more Halloween colors. If you watched my last video that I did sensory bins on, there was the orange mesh tube and I was hesitant about it, but I ended up loving it so much. I mean, so much that I had to get the other colors. So how this comes is in one long tube and you actually have to cut it up. So this right here is all cut up from one long tube. And what was cool about this one is that it is actually different than this one. This one's more of like a coil, looks like a coil. This one's got little fuzzies on it. So it's much different and I thought how fun is that? I'm gonna cut them up real quick. You guys, if you have children that are oral, meaning they put things in their mouth, then this might not be the best fit for your child. This would only work for kids that are not putting things in their mouth. I'm just gonna cut these up for you guys and I'll be right back. Right, I just finished cutting all of those and you guys, it was a little messy. I have to admit, a lot of the little shiny fray came off. In fact, you can see it all over here. I don't know if it's just because I cut it or if it's because I was playing with it. Either way, it's gonna be a little bit messy ever since you've been, if you use this little fuzzy one versus the plain one that I used before. All right, so I got all three colors mixed up here. If you're not doing a Halloween theme, use different colors, totally fine. They come in so many. Oh, I just love them. They're just so fun to play with. This is three packages in here. You of course can use just one package and one color. And then we got our little pumpkins. We're gonna hide them inside the sensory bin. One of the things about sensory bin is making sure you get in there and move things around so that you're actively touching things. Also found this crafter square ribbon in a really pretty glittery orange. And of course I always like to have tasks involved with my sensory bins. So the task is going to be to find the pumpkins to clip them on here for some fine motor. I'm gonna just look at enough to tape across the bin. You guys, this ribbon is super pretty. And I'm just gonna tape it across one side. You can just tie it around the whole side if you want. You can skip this part if you want. I just think it's kind of gives them a purpose of what they're doing. So now our goal is to find the pumpkins and to clip them on to our ribbon. Now what this is for is mostly that fine motor exercise along with the sensorial component and finding the pumpkins. If you wanted to, you could also have them decorate the pumpkins to have them be part of the sensory bin. That's a lot of fun. You can have them pinch them off and then hide them again to look for them and to find them. You can have them search for a certain number of them. You can make it into a counting activity. You could also clip them onto the edge of your container. These containers do not work. They're too thick to clip on, so you can't clip them on. That's 
why I have the ribbon, but you might have a container that you're using that is thin enough to use it. So this one is a pumpkin search fine motor clip on activity. So for the next activity, I'm gonna actually use the same bin because I think it's important to know that you can reuse materials, make something new with a new twist. You don't always have to buy a different thing for every one. Use what you got, you guys. That's my big mantra here. I'm a little mixed up on the colors, but it's gonna be okay. They're gonna get mixed up when they're played with anyway. All right, so I got my base. We're gonna use that same kind of base that we had before. You can use a different one if you want to. Pom-poms are always a fun one too. And this time I found these felt ghosts. They also had some felt bats, I think. I thought it'd be fun to use this for a little counting activity. So what I'm gonna do is on these ghosts, I'm gonna put a number on them. I actually am gonna use some number stickers just because I have them and they're easy. These also came from the Dollar Tree, but you don't have to use these. You can even just write on your ghost if you want. If you're gonna make this a counting activity, I recommend getting enough ghosts to have up to 10. Paul, how many ghosts come in this package? 12, there's 12 ghosts in here, so this is perfect. Sorry for all the white. I wasn't thinking about that when I was getting all the materials. Four, five, I'm just gonna go up to five just because we're just doing an example, right? I'm actually gonna use that lid so you can see my ghosts a little bit better. Now you can mix them up. You can use one or two ghosts. You can work on the numbers that you're working on. I have also are some googly eyes. Now these are also sold at the Dollar Tree, but I didn't get any because I have, as you can see, a well-stocked box full of googly eyes. In fact, I have the Halloween ones that usually come around this time of year that are a little, little silly. So then you'll just put a couple of these inside your sensor bin just dump a package in there have them all in there mix them up real good and you guys this is just a really really simple find the eyes in the sensory bin and to match them up to the ghost so I have one here with four so I'd hunt and peck and I'd give this ghost four eyes there we go it gets really silly with how they end up looking and so now we are doing a counting activity and you have to dig in there to find them too so that works out really well very easy to put together very simple if you don't want to do the halloween theme you don't have to use ghosts you can just use pieces of paper with numbers on them you can do a monster theme if you want you can put foam hearts in here and have them find the hearts and match them up to number flashcards and there you go creating some ghosts by finding them inside of here if you don't want to use the eyeballs i have another alternative i have some black pom-poms here which could be the exact same thing instead of using the eyeballs you can have them I can't believe I just dropped that on you. <laughs> you can have them search for the pom-poms instead of eyeballs, which are a little bit easier to grasp for younger hands, and they would just look for the pom-poms instead. If you like this video, I'm gonna put another one up here on screen so you can get inspired on some more dollar activities. Who doesn't like that? Make sure to click subscribe to see more videos like this and give me a thumbs up to show your love.